Hello everyone, it's Clay Ramage. Welcome back to my channel. Um, we have another, another, I keep saying another, Goodwill Bins haul today. And uh, we have some great stuff again. Um, and as my last video, a couple of videos ago actually, um, I tried a new format on showing some stuff. So this time it's actually going to be a mix of the two because I have some very large items that are, I can't really show, um, in the other in a smaller format on the little turntable so i will do the large items and uh and then i will do the small items but yeah so if you're new to the channel welcome thank you for coming and viewing our video uh, we do a lot of thrift hauls here as, as my regular viewers know we dig through the bins and find all sorts of amazing stuff in my opinion that are just uh waiting to be discovered at the bins so if you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, let's just get right into this haul. Um, so, always have, you know, being in the reselling business, you always have to be thinking ahead, right? What's the next major holidays? What's the next major items you should be uh, looking for? So, yep, it's Easter. I found two of these um, plastic ball blow molds. These are actually from 1995. This one has a piece of plastic rolling around the inside of it, but, um, so yeah, neither one had a cord with it, so, but it's just a blow mold, but I have tons of the cords, um, if I want to attach those to it. So these are from 1995, they're dated on the bottom, so they would be considered vintage for like Etsy and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so I was looking for Easter stuff, found two of those, and blow molds sell extremely well right now they're extremely popular um the other thing i found was this long yardstick which is 48 inch so it's more than a yard um but it's got levels in it built into it so if you want to make sure you're measuring on a level basis and uh so yeah i really liked it so i thought i i could use a little longer ruler measuring stick so i grabbed that and as many of my longtime viewers know, I love artwork. And today was no different, but I did learn something new today. I did find this fabulous print. This is a lithograph. Um, the colors are just still vibrant. Um, so this was obviously stored in a very dark place um, outside of direct sunlight that the colors stayed so much. The back uh, kind of needs some help. It's been taped on. Um, there is a title on the back. It says The Forest Stream. And this was cut down a little bit to fit into this frame um, with the rounded corners and things. But I just think it's beautiful. The frame does have a couple places where the um, applique is broken out. You know, they, they just, it's just a composite material. This isn't hand carved. It's just applied to the wood frame. And this is actually painted wood grain. Um, but I love the frame, love the thing and I found out when I was checking out today that at our outlet store pictures are priced at five dollars each I didn't know that I've been paying for some of them I've been paying by the pound because I didn't know that I could do them separately so now that I know that the heavier ones especially I will uh, pull them out and just pay five dollars each for them as opposed to by the pound like this one is probably about four pounds so i would have paid you know anywhere six to eight dollars for it so i saved a couple dollars by it being a picture um but this next one ugh, this was my big big thing and i'm so glad they considered this a picture because technically you might not have but the manager came over and actually said no it looks like a picture to me you can put a picture in that it's a picture it's this frame. Let me turn it this way. Beautiful or neat frame. And this is one of those where back in the 70s, probably, they turned it into a more of a shadow box form. And you can see the grooves where they put shelves in there. So they would have had shelves and then they antiqued it. Um, because you can tell in certain sections like here where the paint's missing, that it's actually a gold leaf frame underneath um the antiqued paint and it was not done very well there's drips and all sorts of stuff on it um so i'm trying to decide if i would want to strip it 
take out this insert, turn it back to a regular picture frame, or just add a couple shelves and put it on my wall and enjoy it that way. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I couldn't pass it up. And especially when I found out it was five bucks, I was like, it's mine. <laughs> so I love vintage frames, especially ornate like that. And speaking of ornate frames, found another one of these made in Italy frames. Um, I originally found just the frame and then I found the picture separate um, that goes in there. So it's got the backing board. So again, I take these and I make a collection of five to eight of them and sell them that way. And this is like a 12 inch frame. It's a little larger, which is great. Love that. Um, and the other thing I found was more original artwork. Um, plus some prints. These are prints. Um, this one is called Air, Water, Earth, and Fire. This is by a local Minnesota uh, artist named um, Holly Sue Ross. And her stuff is for sale on eBay. You can find it out there. Um, this one's called The Owl. Same artist. Um, all of these are still wrapped in their plastic. This was the first one I found. It's called The River of Life. Um, all of them are just great prints uh, with bright, vibrant colors. And uh, happy, happy pictures. I found a couple of mats. And then I found this one. This also is a local Minnesota artist. Uh, this is actually different um, buildings of Minneapolis, like Target Field, Hennepin Avenue. Uh, this is number 112 out of a series of 250. Um, and I can't read the name. I didn't really try very hard. It's a little bent, but I can flatten those out. So, yeah. So those are the I larger items we got today. I am going to reset up and uh so you guys can get a closer look at the smaller stuff that i found so here we go okay folks here we are starting the small item haul and yes that's right saint patty's day is coming up and mr teddy bear is wishing you guys all a happy uh, saint patty's day so <laughs> this is actually a little pen you can see the pen on the back put it on your jacket isn't that cool i just thought that was a lot of fun so Got to get ready for the next holiday. This is a, a lovely little painting I found. This is an original watercolor. And this um, artist, Sauchek, is a local Minnesota artist also. This is actually my third piece I found of his. One of them is a uh, set of uh, black chickadees, um, small miniature paintings similar to this size. And then I also have one of an old antique car in the middle of a field covered with snow. Same artist as well. I really like his work. Um, so I haven't been selling it. I've actually been keeping it. So I don't know what I'll do with this one. But it's a beautiful spring print um, with the tulips. So, yeah. Um, vintage item is this that I found. Invisimend. So it's a little mending kit for when you get holes in your clothes. Not exactly sure how it works. Um, it's dated 1969. It does give the instructions on the back. Um, so hmm, I'll do some more, excuse me, do some more research on that and see what I can come up with. Okay, now this was something I was really surprised to find in the bins. I'm going to move the camera up just a little bit. His name's Herman. I found Herman in the bins. And if we spin him around, you can tell he's like a little butcher chopping on a piece of meat there. Um, but he's a Goebel figure, Gable figure if you pronounce it in German. Um, and it's 1982, I believe. Yep, 1982 is the date on the bottom. So I was really surprised to find him. I've not looked up, I was going to look up the value before I did the video, but I didn't get to it. But he is in perfect condition. No nicks, no chips, no 
missing paint or anything. So, and this was just as I was getting ready to check out, I was walking past the bin and I kind of broke the rules and grabbed, reached into this bin, grabbed him out of there. I also grabbed this guy, Mr. Camel Teapot. That's right, he's a teapot. Um, the lid is taped on. He's made in Japan. As somebody, Christmas at the lake, Mom and Cindy, 1996. So, um, yeah, so it looks like somebody probably got him as a Christmas present back in 1996. All right, took the tape off so we can take the lid off. So, how many times do you see a camel teapot? Uh, I've never seen one before. So that's pretty fun. Um, it does look like the handle needs a little... This needs to be slipped back in there, which I can do. But yeah, so that was an exciting find to me. And where's my other one? Oh, here she is. I also found another little gable figure. Gable figure. Hummel figure, whatever you want to call them. This little girl with the doll. She's marked on the bottom. Um, 19, ah, she's marked 1967. I don't know if you can see that. It's down, right down there. So, yeah. I was surprised to find her. Now, again, these are not, Hummel figures are not nearly as collectible as they used to be. Um, but they're still collectible, you know. They're not as valuable either. Then I also found this guy, speaking of collectible, these are the, I believe it's Beyer, B-E-Y-E-R, horses. Um, I've been looking for one of these at the bins for a long time and finally found one today. So I was really surprised because they are fairly collectible and you can see the mark there. I don't know if you can read it, but the mark is right there. It's stamped. So, yeah. So I found a lot of nice collectibles. This was also this beautiful stand, plate stand, picture stand, was in the um, uh, bin with the Gable figures to the Hummel figures. So and that was a nice bin that I um, stopped just on my way out the door. I'm so glad I spotted that. Um, this is, I'm going to spin this around. Yeah, that's right. It's a St. Patty's Day planter. And it's got a sticker on the bottom. Um, this is in Arco, Japan. It's got the, you know, velvet, little flocked exterior. Now it is broken on the inside. Let me see if you can, back here you can see a crack. Um, but the thing of it is, you don't really see it on the outside because of the flocking. So that's why I picked it up, even though it was broken. I thought somebody will want it because it's just cute for St. Patty's Day decoration. It does need to be cleaned up too. A little dirty but we can do that that's easy enough um i picked up this pigmania game um i picked up the small travel one you know months ago and cindy and i've been playing that we've been enjoying that this is the full game and i found out these things are actually you know on ebay i looked them up while i was there i wasn't sure games are always hit and miss but these sell for around 20 to $25, and there's only 11 of them listed for sale right now, but there's like there was like 80 of them that had sold. So that's always a great um, sold ratio when you've got very few listed and tons sold. Um, so these are very popular, and I did look. It is complete with all the stuff inside, so that's, that was a fun little find. And I found these lovely salt and pepper shakers these are hand painted nippon and it's got that mark on there it's like a t double quotes t double quotes 
I've never seen that, and I'm not sure, you know, if that's a Japanese symbol. Um, but because the whole thing is in English, I would assume it's probably an English, you know, interpretation symbol or something. Um, but yeah, I just really liked these. The gold is worn a little on the top, but they're just really cute, so. Um, and let's see. I found a Greist product. This is a sewing machine buttonholer. Um, everything's still in the box, which is pretty amazing. It even has the little divider thingy. The cams are down in the bottom of it. Um, and there's the other little plate. So, so yeah, a complete set, which I was kind of surprised to find. Um, usually they're always missing something. But I do well with these sewing machine parts, so um, I will work on doing that. I did find this sewing machine part also still in its original package. This is a monogram embroidery guide, so it attaches to the, your front of your sewing foot to guide the thread, you know, as you're sewing over it. So, or, you know, embroidering it. So it's kind of cool. Keeps it out of the way. And let's see. That's right. I did find some jewelry. Um, no sterling. Sorry to say. But I did find this gold necklace. It's like two strands of cloth. And then a gold chain. You know, tied in knots. So, kind of interesting. And then there is... This necklace also, which does have a tag on it. Now it's all tangled up. And it's marked like RB on it. You guys might know. Or BR or something, I don't know. You guys might know what that mark means. Melissa from Jewelry of, Journey of Jewelry probably does, so maybe she could tell me. Um... Then I found a hair barrette, a fancy one, some nice rhinestones on it. And again, I picked this stuff up and I put it in lots and, and away we go. Oh, it's getting all tangled up. All right, so I found these four little angel figurines. They were in a baggie. Um, these are all made in Hong Kong. Very cute. I love this one with the three lambs trying to hold on to them all. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. But yeah, so these are... Um, oops. Nice little vintage figures. Angel figurines. Oops. He just keeps falling down because he's got... You can see he's just got the two feet. So it's... Yeah. He's got some... He's one that he should hang, because he doesn't stand very well. <laughs> and then, um, oops, and then I knock him down. So those were a lot of fun. I like those. I'm just knocking everything down. All right, we can get it. I found this. A couple pieces of vintage dollhouse furniture, little plastic <laughs> Uh... I found this dresser. The mirror is missing from it, and it looks like something from the front of the drawer there, too. Then also that little Victorian-style sofa. Uh, made in Hong Kong. So again, 60s, 70s, maybe as late as the 80s, but probably more earlier than that. Um, cool. All right, folks, I'm back. Sorry, I got a phone call in the middle of <laughs> taping the video. Anyway, um, I found these. These are all brand new in package. I probably have 30 to 40 packages of these I picked up. They're um, tennis racket strings. And there's two different kinds, two different colors, white and a yellowish. Um, and they're very light in weight, so... I probably paid a quarter for each package. And even if I sell them for three to four dollar a package, although on looks like on eBay they're between five and ten. So uh 
again, my philosophy is I like to move things quickly. I don't, so I price a little more aggressively. Maybe I'll put them out there at $5. I don't know. But the nice thing is I can do, you know, one multiple quantity listing. So I can list it as, you know, one listing and they can buy one to however many I have um, as a quantity. So that's kind of nice. So these are nice deals um, when you can do them. Because then you're only listing once and the amount of effort is minimal for the amount of sales you get. So um, the other thing, exciting find, was this oil lamp. And I actually just found the lamp by itself. Um, and it says amber glass, but it's got this grape and vine um, format to it with the little finger hole handle. Um, it's got the crown on the flame thing. This one obviously was used. You can see the wick's been burnt. But then I found two different um, chimneys for it. I found this one, which is a shorter one, which I think is the right size for it. It was in a different bin, though. But then I also found this chimney, which is a much larger chimney with a nice design on it um, and a nice layer of dirt um, that also fits it, but is just is too big when it's on there. So I'm going to list, you know, I'll put it in wherever I sell it. I'll put the smaller chimney on it. And this was an exciting find. This was my only electronic piece I bought. It's this little lamp. It's a very small lamp. It is basically a milk glass. This is a metal frame around it, metal base. And it's got these stripes of gold paint around them. And it does need a little help. There's no bulb in it. And the little switch needs to be put back through this through this hole so where you turn it on and off but I wanted to show you the label on the bottom because it says globe and it's 24 karat gold plated which I thought was very interesting because usually lamps are not 24 karat gold <laughs> plated and that's a lot of gold plating for this particular item and I'm really curious to see how it lights up it must just be a really soft glow, so it's kind of like a little night light. So, Goodwill tried to sell it for $5 at the store. It didn't sell, but I bought it for $0.99 cents at the outlet. So, so, we'll see if I can sell it and what I can sell it for. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what that uh, is all about. Um, let's see. I think that is about the end of it. I did get more bubble wrap and tissue paper and stuff like that for shipping supplies and a couple uh, jewelry boxes empty. Um, but yeah, so that's our haul for today. It's a nice, another fairly large one, a lot of smalls, but, uh, we should do really well with it. Thanks guys. Catch you next time.